All right, guys, welcome back to Hollywood Mechanic. Today we're talking about the PTU from Ferrari, the uh, GTC4 Lusso, and the FF have them. And we got it right here. I'll tell you what goes wrong with them. And of course, I got a rebuild kit for you. Don't worry. Uh, but it's the same thing every time. It's that little clip right there. I'll show you how to fix it. Make sure it never happens again. And also, while you're in there, just go ahead and replace all the seals and gaskets. All right, guys, welcome back to Hollywood Mechanic, where we are working with another Ferrari today. This is the Ferrari FF. Uh, it's the same component, I believe, on the uh, GTC4 Lusso. What we're talking about is the PTU. This is the power transfer unit. So let me just go ahead and show you what it is, where it fits. Uh, it fits right here. It bolts directly to the front of the engine, and, um, and the power is then coming from the engine directly to the front drive shafts here, okay? You do have to remove the steering rack. Obviously, that's what we got here, power steering lines. Um, it recommends the front crossbar. I would just go ahead and do your belt service and all the uh, idler pulleys while you're in there. But, um, okay, so really quickly, what happens with that? Well, most common fault I see is ATF pressure low or ATF fluid low, warning on the dash, followed by uh, four wheel drive system fault, Menatino, which is the switch on the steering wheel system fault due to, you know, and, and then defaulting to wet mode. Uh, but you also notice that the fluid in the reservoir, now that reservoir will empty. And, you know, you can put fresh fluid in it and it may work for a little bit, may not work for a little bit. But eventually what this is, and this is the problem that everyone says, oh, I was driving, I was driving fine. Fluid's leaking out of the top of it. And this is the PTU unit. This is what it looks like inside. Um, this is all exploded everywhere, but fluid will eventually start leaking out of the top of this. Now, the reason for that is there are actually two fluids inside this front transmission. Um, just like the rear transmission on the car has a DCT fluid and a gear oil, uh, you can actually use the same fluids that you use for the gearbox. It's a, uh, um, they use Shell DCT T3, or T3, I believe, and uh, for the gear oil, 75W90 Spirax ATE, but you know, of course, those are garbage fluids. So I just use Motul DCTF for the uh, gear fluid or for clutch fluid, and then um, 300V LS 75W90, also from Motul. And the benefit to that is it is a green gear oil, and the clutch fluid is a clear yellow or amber if you go with the high torque. So uh, you can definitely differentiate between the fluid leaks. Um, let me show you how it works here. The way the system works is there is a hydraulic pump up there by the reservoir that pumps pressure into this valve block. And then these solenoids here all operate different functions. Like they, for instance, operate the clutch. Uh, fluid comes from the valve body here into a hole here and goes over here, makes a turn, comes into this little hole, which feeds in the middle here, there's a seal here and a seal here, which I'm replacing here. Uh, but it feeds in there and that actuates the uh, this little thing to apply pressure. When this whole shelf right here moves up and down and applies pressure, well that like applies pressure to these clutch discs. And these discs spin independently of the axle. The axle splines in here, but when you pressure uh, the plates, then it bites them, locks them together, and then the exterior locks with the front and that's how the clutch system works cool the clutch itself is cooled by the gear oil and then this is the little pinion you know that or ring excuse me comes off this is the pinion gear on the front cover here now, it's extremely difficult to take apart don't take it apart unless you really want to there's like hidden pins um that like go in here and on the bottom side that you got to pull out in here these little pins uh, so you got to be very careful on how you do it, not to just unbolt it and start hammering away at it. Also, when you pull uh, the clutch basket apart or the front cover off, there are bearings in there that are loose. So you have to assembly goo them back on. These are just loose back on there. And then reassemble it here and then press it together. And there's you're going to need special tools like this. Okay, so how does it work once we get this going? Well, gear oil is supposed to be filled up to this point. So the way that you fill it is you... Uh, at the bottom of this is a brass plug 
that has a plug inside the plug and you take that little plug off then pump fluid up in here until it's at this level so you just keep pumping fluid and then you stop for a little bit a little bit will trickle out but if it keeps flowing out then you know you've overfilled it and then you just remove the middle plug and let the excess pour out so then the level of gear oil should be this high okay and then this cools all the gears you've got normal like you know shift collars uh, and synchros and free gears and fixed gears just like a normal manual transmission only this thing i think it only has two forward gears and one reverse gear okay um maybe i'm but it doesn't matter regardless it then uses these position sensors to sense a magnetic uh, point here which is covered in metal there uh, on the shift fork to know which gear it's in and then it uses clutch pressure from those solenoids and these pipes to direct it to uh, these shift forks now this is what the shift fork looks like and um, this is one disassembled this is one assembled and it has a rod in there if you put fluid in pressure here then it causes this chamber to fill up and shifts one way put fluid pressure here you can hear the pressure relief uh, and pushes pressure this way. Okay, so that's how the system works. S computer sends pressure from the pump to shift and engage clutches and the gear oil cools it. So how am I leaking fluid out of here? Well, what happens is, uh, is they have these little puny little snap rings. Okay, so let me show you the one here that I haven't rebuilt. Look, look at how, you know, you can see the edge of the material there. Um, just through the hole and that hole is about as thick as that little arm is and so what happens is is it it you know the banging back and forth in gear is quite a hydraulic shock on those brass pieces so what it does is it breaks breaks these little snap rings and this is one that like completely broke off that's all that was left in it there was a ton of metal in there thankfully they're so thin they get ground up um, here's another one on the back side that had broken off. It just hadn't come out yet And the reason for that is like there's actually some play in there uh, In the bushing there. There's a little bit of play. I'll insert a video here showing like when it moves This can actually move so it's just bang 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 every time it shifts a certain direction bang 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 on this little snap ring And that snap ring breaks. Okay, it's a poor design. It also like wears on these little nubs here um so eventually they'll stop staying in place i am having custom ones made um after we 3d scan this so i'll have replacement ones sooner than later but um basically a fix that you can do if you want to like hey catch it before it fails because if you catch it before it fails you don't need to replace any parts other than the snap rings and of course all the seals which we have seals we have seals for days this is how many seals we bought to be sure that we had all the seals. Everything needs to be, of course, in a Viton. And that way it's chemical resistant because that DCT fluid is extremely caustic. But then you can replace everything, including the seals. The seals on these shafts are in there. Replace those bad boys. Right there's one, there's one, um, and there's one, and there's the other one magically there. Um, once you replace all of those on the sleeve, I also upgrade these snap rings. So I remove them and use a heavy duty. See how much surface area covers that brass piece? A lot. It still fits in the groove, but now there's no play. It cannot, uh, wiggle in there. So the brass piece is very firmly held. There's no impact on the snap ring. On top of that, it is a larger snap ring. It is a um, heavy duty internal ring. Now, it does say for 28 millimeter ID. Unfortunately, it's a little bit too large, so I have to trim them. Right now, what I'm doing is just trimming off one of the tabs, and then very carefully getting it to fit in there. It does fit, it works really well, it won't break. Um, I'm having the proper size ones made as well. And then this will be a non-issue from here on out for my clients. Um, i got to get that one in the groove a little bit more. That, that piece right there is not quite in the groove enough. But yeah, that's what it is. So the problem is if you want me to rebuild it, unfortunately, it's like including removing it and rebuilding it. It's about nine grand total. But um, we'll see if we can make that a little bit less once we get these forks made. We can make it a little faster. 
uh, and you'll get new forks. But we'll see about that. That Anyway, that's what's going on with your PTU. If you ignore this thing overfilling and it's coming down here, just so you know, that means fluid's going back that way. And there is a drain for fluid to drain back into the gearbox. But if it's completely full up to here, it can't drain back. And so that means it gets forced into the engine. And I have like fluids that are acidic, that are not designed to be in the engine, uh, the wrong viscosities, bringing in other metals, and it's not good. Uh, and it can ruin that seal. There's actually two seals on the front crank. So, um, honestly, the best thing to do is preemptively. If you buy an FF, take it apart, or a GTC Lusso, let's rebuild it properly. That way, you know, we fix all the Ferrari's mistakes and you won't have a catastrophic failure. Once it fails, unfortunately, parts for this are very difficult to get. They don't sell individual components for most of this, so you're gonna have to um, come to somebody like me who makes it for you.